In this series, we will be exploring together the Gospel according to Mark. One of the most important things for us to know about this book is brought to light in verse 1 of chapter 1. There we read, The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark details for us the good news of Jesus Christ. Romans 1.16 declares this gospel message to be the power of God for salvation. Therefore, we can conclude what is to follow in Mark is a power-filled narrative intended by the Holy Spirit to bring people to their Savior. Now let's take a few moments to learn a little about this book, beginning with our author. Many are not aware that Mark was penned anonymously. Therefore, there's no inscription that says, Words and Illustrations by John Mark. In spite of this, it's almost universally accepted that he is the human hand responsible for this book, obviously our ultimate author and inspiration being the Holy Spirit. Let's note six things about Mark. Number one, he is believed to have been very young during Jesus' ministry. So while he likely spent time with Jesus and the disciples, he wouldn't have been there on a full-time basis. This brings up the question, where did Mark get his information for this account? Well, number two, in 1 Peter 5.13, Peter refers to Mark as his son. Some speculate it was Peter who led Mark to Jesus, and because of this and other evidences, it's widely believed and generally agreed upon that Peter was Mark's main source of information for this account, and a major contributor to the high level of detail in this narrative. Again, we don't know this for sure, but it's intriguing to consider that this gospel account may contain the perspective of Peter. The third thing we know about Mark in Acts 12.12 12, is that he was mentioned as the son of Mary. Mary is the one who owned the home in which the church held the prayer meeting for Peter's release from prison. Fourthly, in Colossians 4.10, we learn that Mark was the cousin of Barnabas, which likely had to do with his being taken on Paul's first missionary journey, bringing us to number five, Mark's failure. When it came time for Paul's second missionary journey, he and Barnabas had a disagreement as to whether or not Mark should be allowed along. Evidently, Mark had turned back on the first trip, and Paul saw this as unacceptable and refused to take Mark again. Fortunately, this would not be the end for Mark. Number six, Mark's restoration. Somewhere down the road, Paul would make specific mention of Mark in his writings in a very positive light, acknowledging him as a co-laborer in Christ. Mark's restorations should serve as an encouragement to you and I. In spite of our real-life failures or being viewed in a less-than-positive light by some around us, we have a loving Father who's the God of another chance. Not only was Mark eventually useful to and commended by Paul, he was then inspired by the Holy Spirit to pen this beautiful book. Let's finish our introduction by taking a look at our theme. Each of the four gospel accounts has a distinct flavor and noticeable theme. Matthew declares Jesus as king. Luke shows his humanity. John emphasizes his deity, while Mark paints Jesus as God's perfect servant. As we journey through this book, we will see the ministry of Jesus as one filled with compassionate acts of service. Presumably written for a Roman audience, Mark is known as an action-packed, fast-paced narrative moving from one act of service to another. This pace is emphasized by the frequent usage of the word immediately, which was employed over 40 times to whisk us from one scene to the next. In closing, if there were a key verse supporting our theme, it would be Mark 10.45. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. This book tells the good news of Jesus, God's perfect servant, culminating with his journey to the cross, where in the greatest act of service this world has ever seen, he would lay down his life and pour forth his blood as a ransom for you and for me. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Thank you for watching this latest offering from Honeycomb Summaries. We pray these five-minute chapter overviews are a blessing and serve to help you grow closer to God. Please take time to go back through and read and study each chapter for yourself. If you're here and don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and aren't assured of the hope of heaven, please don't put off that important decision another day. 
For more information, search our channel for a video called Three Minutes That Could Change Your Life. Please share this video with anyone who might like to learn more about what God has to say in His Word. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be notified as new content is released. Thanks again for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you.